another week another video what is up guys hope everyone is doing great and welcome to this part 5 of this tutorial series about the oculus interaction sdk now in this video we will have a look at the poking interaction i will show you how to detect the direct touch of an object and how we can make a simple button so without further ado get yourself comfortable click on that like button and i guess but now after five episodes you should be subscribed so let's jump straight to the tutorial shall we so, as we saw from the previous episode, adding another interactor is easy with the interaction SDK. So, for the poke interactor, we can search for it in the project window. As you can see, we have one kind for the ends and one for the controller. So, let's first do the setup for the controller. We can drag it under each one of our controller interactor game object. Perfect. Next, we can drag the corresponding controller in the controller ref component and add this controller to the interactor list on the parent. There you go. So now the setup is done for the controllers, but now let's do the exact same thing, but for the ends. So drag them both under the end interactor, add the end reference, and finally add the interactor to the interactor list. Perfect. Now, if we take a look at this prefab we just added, we can see for the poke of the end that it is using a poke interactor component for the behavior of this interactor and as the point transform, which define the position used for poking, we have this children that has a hand join component that will make this game object follow the index finger with a little offset. And by the way, this is a really useful component that you can use to make any game object follow the position of the bone on the hand. Okay, so now that we made the interactor setup, let's use it on an interactable. So for this, I'm going to create another new cube by right clicking 3D object cube. We can rename it button interactable and I'm going to scale it down and put it above the table. We can then change its material to red. Now to interact with this cube with our poke, it's really simple. We simply need to add a poke interactable component to it. So let's click on add component and search for it. Perfect. So as you can see, the poke interactable needs two parameter, a proximity field and a surface. The proximity field will define when we detect a direct touch and the surface will define when a selection occur. So this means that when the button is pressed all the way down. So we could add this component directly on this cube, but I'm going to add them on a separate children and you will see why in a minute. So let's create an empty game object as a children of our cube cube, rename it proximity field, and if we search for a proximity field component, you can see that there are multiple shapes we can select. So in my case, we have a square object, so I'm simply going to add a box proximity field. Next, we can drag the proximity field game object in the box transform. And by doing so, we can see now this blue edge around our cube that define the proximity field. So that's why I put it on a separate object because if we want it, we could change the scale of this game object to change the size of our proximity field to what we want. But in my case, I will leave it to one, one, one. Okay, next for the surface, we can create another empty game object, rename it surface search for pointable not surface and as you can see we have also multiple choice now remember that the surface is where the selection occurs with our poke so this means that when our index finger will go through the surface it will select so the simple thing to do here would be to use a pointable plane and this will define as you can see a plane that our finger can go through to select and again because we add it on a separate game object we can edit this game object on its own so i'm going to rotate it 19 degrees so that now the blue axis will face down i think that the selection is good if it happens at half of the cubes here so i'm going to leave it right there but you can move it up or down to select at different pushing distance so finally, we can drag the proximity field and the surface in our poke interactable. And by doing this, as you can see, we have a blue icon showing on our cube. So this icon shows where the first touch is directed. 
Now, as you can see, the detection seems a bit above the cube, so we can trick this by reducing the max distance parameter. Okay, so now let's try this intractable. We could, as we did for the ray, add an intractable unity event wrapper to trigger anything we wanted when interacting with it. But if we simply want to change the color of this cube, there is an easier component that can do this. So let's add it. It's called Intractable Debug Viewer. And as the name suggests, it is really helpful to test the interaction of something. We can simply drag here the renderer of the cube. And there you go. Now let's click on play to test. And there it is. It worked. Now, as you can see for both controller and end tracking, when I approach my end, the cube changed its color. And even more important, when I push down and reach the surface plane, the selection occurs and the cube changes its color to green. So this is our thumb, but one thing is missing. How can we make this cube move up and down when poking it? So if we move the cube up and down, the issue that we have right now is that everything will move with it. So the surface as well and the proximity field also. So that's why I think it would be better if we made a separate object for the visual of the button as well. So let's create an empty game object, call it button visual. Now as a children of this game object, we can create a new cube, change its color to red. Now we don't need the cube on the parent anymore, so let's remove both the mesh renderer and the mesh filter. Don't forget to assign back now the renderer of the debug visual to the new cube we made. And there you go, now the visual of the button is on a separate game object that we can move. Now to make it follow our finger when we push, we simply need to add a new component called poke interactable visual. So as you can see, we can drag the interactable for the first parameter. For the Again, we can drag there our surface and now for this button to look like it's following our finger when we push this game object needs to be at the top of the button visual so to do this we can simply select the cube children and move it to minus 0.5 on the y axis and now as you can see the parent pivot is at the top of the cube which is what we want and we can even adjust the position of everything if the cube is hanging too low okay now everything is ready now let's try our game to see if the cube move and there you go guys it worked as you can see the cube move ups and down to the push of our finger and this is such a solid base to make a beautiful button now one easy trick to make it even nicer is simply to add a base to it so for this i just simply added another cube under the intractable scale it to a good size and change its color to black and now, as you can see, the button feels even more realistic. But something that does not really feel realistic is that when I push it through, my hands pass through the button. And there is an easy fix with that with the Oculus interaction, which is really cool. So to finish this tutorial, let me show you how we can do this. Now, simply, if we want to limit our hand when pushing, we need to have our hand synthetic blocking at the right moment. So for this, let's go to our hand synthetic right and on the end modifier children we can add a new component called hand poke limiter visual we can add the end reference then drag the poke interactor and finally the synthetic hand for the third parameter and now everything is ready we simply need to do the same but for the other end okay perfect now everything is set up let's click on play to show you the result and there you go guys we managed to create a beautiful and handsome button and as you can see the end limiter had a really nice touch and makes it impossible to go behind the button when we push it it's so cool so i hope that you enjoy watching this tutorial we are going deeper and deeper into the interaction and i love the result we have so far so let me know what you want to see next as always the source code as well as some exclusive content are available on my patreon if you want to support the channel so thank you for watching and see you soon bye bye